praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Today is Deeper Life Celebration Day. And I pray that the celebration of joy that has started today in your own heart will never stop. You should be waiting for announcement before the end of the year. There's going to be another time. Praise the Lord. As we come today, I'm sure you understand, today is not a day of much preaching. Today is a day of joy. And then for you to have some foundation in your life. That's what you have heard today. You want to transfer that to your own heart. And you want to take all the testimonies back home. And understand that now you are in for multiple blessings. Yeah. That everything that needs to be cleared away, this is that year. Yeah. Everything that needs to fill your life, this is the year. Yeah. You just started today celebrating, you'll celebrate again. Yeah. Why don't you stand up a moment because we've been sitting for a long time. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the great things you've done, glorious things you have done. Holy is your name. You're exalted, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient. Lord, we thank you because you are our God. Your word is a promise unto us. The Holy Spirit stands by us every time and lives within us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you have done and for what you will continue to do. I pray, Lord, everyone taking part in this celebration today, joy will never cease in their heart. Joy will never stop in their family. You touch everything belonging to all your people, and I pray you turn every life around in Jesus' name. As we come to your word for this brief moment, Lord, I pray. Drop your blessing in every heart. You are blessing us already. Multiply the blessings. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. We're in Nehemiah chapter 8. Nehemiah chapter 8. I'm reading to you there from verse 6. And then I'll jump down to verse 8. And then I'll come to verse 10. 6. 8, 10. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 6. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. Verse 8. So, they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and cause them to understand the reading. Verse 10. Then said he unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto our God. Neither be ye sorry, no sorrow anymore. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. There is a kind of joy that brings transformation. A joy that transforms the weak to become strong. The joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the kind of joy that takes fear away and replaces with faith. The kind of joy that gives you confidence in the Lord. That although you are fearful, will this happen? Will that happen? When you see the face of the enemy, and then you hear all these wonderful testimonies, and there's joy in your heart. And you throw your fears to the wind. Because there is a transformation from fear onto faith. There's a kind of joy that will turn despair into hope. Before you came today, the despair, the depression, and maybe what you have gone through, and then as the joy of the Lord comes, there is a transformation from despair unto hope. 
That's the kind of joy that transforms captives to conquerors. That as you are being caged in your problem and caged in your kind of infirmity, and then you hear all these testimonies, and there's something in your heart. The joy of the Lord. God is still alive. And the promises of God are still yes and amen. All of a sudden, the captives are touched to conquerors. You see, there are times when you have anxiety. You've had all these, all these testimonies. Every one of them, if you think about it, there's a moment of anxiety in their lives. The one that was captured. Will I ever come out of this? And then the one that was married, and then no child for this year and this year. That's your despair and anxiety. But anxiety turns to assurance. You see the joy of the Lord when it comes to you, it changes that anxiety, and now you have assurance. As the children of Israel were going to the promised land, because this is your own time now, you're getting to the promised land. We're leaving the wilderness behind, just at the brink of crossing over to the promised land. They felt so small, so despised. In fact, they said they were like grasshoppers. But as a kind of, you know, when you hear all these testimonies, and they're feeling like as if I'm a grasshopper. I'm nobody. They just march on me and crush me and, and finish me. But then the kind of joy that comes and transforms grasshoppers to giants. And as I see you here today, I say there are giants in this land. Giants that will carry the blessings of the Lord. That by the grace of God, you understand that although you are in bondage, but then the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, is a kind of transforming joy that transforms people in bondage and it sets us free. And I come to declare to you today, you are free. Yeah. Nothing to bind you anymore. Yeah. Unbelief will not bind you. Yeah. Sickness will not bind you. Yeah. Enemies will not bind you. Yeah. Because there's no time for sorrow anymore in your life. The past, all the water that is gone under the bridge, they are gone. Never to return anymore in Jesus' name. I want to quickly talk to you on the transforming joy of God's people. The transforming joy of God's people. You hear the word of God, you hear the testimonies, you hear the name of Jesus. And the Lord is saying, I'm thinking about you. All those things that are coming up in your heart that may bring fear or anxiety or whatever is, or despair. The Lord is telling you, there's a kind of joy we share together today. And it gives us this transformation. This transformation. Darkness is gone, light has now begun. And this is the dawn of a new day for you, my brother, for you, my sister. The transforming joy of God's people. Three things. Number one, the affirmation and the assurance of a joyful sound. The affirmation and the assurance of a joyful sound. Number two, the admonition and application of joint servants joint servants we join our hearts together and we tell you the same thing what you hear here that god has raised you up from being a grasshopper from despair from anxiety from doubt from fear that's what i'm going to hear when you go to your local church because we bless you here you are blessed at home you are blessed in the district you are blessed in the region you are blessed in the state you are blessed in the country the blessing that comes forth from the headquarters here is going to go through your life for the rest of your days in Jesus' name. And we servants of the Lord, we join our voices together. We pronounce blessing upon you. You are blessed. Number three, the affection and ascending joy. Ascending joy of justified saints. That means that joy starts at a particular level. And that joy continues to increase and to increase and to ascend let me quickly come to number one we're looking at the affirmation and assurance of a joyful sound we're looking at nehemiah chapter 8 verse 6 and ezra blessed the lord the great god and all the people answered amen amen 
You are asking yourself every time you have heard that all over, or from here, or almost every day we hear that when we have quiet time in the morning, devotion in the morning, and we pray in Jesus' name, we say Amen. And then when we are at the table, we say Amen. And then you go for Bible study, we are praying, and then we pray, we say Amen. Thursday revival hour, Amen. On Sunday, on Sunday, the Amen is you know from the beginning to the very end, Amen, Amen. By the way, what does that mean? When we say, when we say something, and then we say, Amen. I'm sure you, you have an idea in your mind, but you know what the scripture says about that word, Amen? The joyful sound. The affirmation of that joyful sound. And then the confirmation of that joyful sound. The assurance that that word, Amen, gives to us. Follow me through your Bible, First Kings. I'm looking at chapter 1, verse 36. First Kings, chapter 1. And we're looking at verse 36. In verse 36, it says, And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, answered the king and said, Tell me, Amen, the Lord God of my Lord, the king, says so too. That's the meaning of Amen. That is, we we'll pronounce a blessing upon you and then we we'll say Amen. The meaning is, the Lord God of heaven, the Almighty, the unchanging one, says so too. That is why you say that Amen. God says, that means I'm saying that to you. I affirm that. I confirm that. You have assurance in your mind, in your heart. And when God says so to you, the devil cannot contradict it. Every blessing that comes upon you in the, on this day of celebration, and then we we'll say amen. The amen means the God of heaven also agrees with you. And the God of heaven says so to you. We're looking at um, Psalm 72. In Psalm 72, I'm reading from verse 17. Psalm 72. We're looking at verse 17. Every time you hear that, Amen, is a word of confirmation. Verse 17 of Psalm 72. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be the Lord God, the God of Israel, who only doeth wondrous things. That's all they will be doing in your life. You won't do any other thing, only wondrous things, only wonderful things, only miraculous things. you will be doing in your life for the rest of your life in Jesus' name. The Lord God of heaven says so too in your life. In verse 19, blessed be his glorious name forever. And let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen. amen and amen. You know what that means? When it says, if you look at everything here, it says, Blessed be the name of the glorious God forever. We know that's going to be, that's the meaning of the amen. God says so too. Heaven confirms that too. The angels accept that too. And we men on earth, we accept that too. And when it says, and the whole earth shall be filled with his glory and then it says amen and amen the almighty god says so it will be so that the whole earth will be filled with his glory we're looking at second corinthians chapter one in verse 20 second corinthians chapter one verse 20 for all the promises of god in him are yea that means yes and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. All the promises of God. Check up in your Bible. You are saved. There's a promise of healing. You are afflicted. There's a promise of deliverance. Or you, you are battling with sin. There's a promise of salvation and strength, of grace. You are battling with guilt. There's a promise of mercy. And you are battling with doubt in your life. There's a promise of assurance. I will never leave you. I'll never forsake you. And the Lord is in all those promises you read in the word of God. They are yes and they are amen in your life. That Christ has said it. And the God of heaven says so too. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Verses, uh, verses 20 and 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to his divine power, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be glory 
in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. The God of heaven says so to you. What's the God of heaven saying in your life? He's saying God is able in your life. He's able to do all things in your life. Is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you even ask or think and then there's a confirmation here there's an amen that goes along with that you are a child of blessing yeah. and you'll carry on the blessings of the lord in your life in jesus name yeah. wipe those tears away there's no sorrow anymore because the joy of the lord will be your strength in jesus name Second Timothy, I'm reading chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, we're reading from verse 18. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 18. And the Lord shall deliver you from every evil work and will preserve you unto his heavenly kingdom. Then to him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Deliverance has come for you. Liberty has come for you. Freedom has come for you. All that the enemies plan in the secret, all their traps are destroyed in Jesus' name. Because the Lord will deliver you whatever the problem, the challenge may be, whatever the crossroad may be. The Lord's deliverance is available for you already. And there is an amen here for you in the name of Jesus. Jude, chapter 1, only one chapter. Jude, verse 24. Now... Unto him that is able to keep you from falling, he will keep you. And to preserve you, he will preserve you. Faultless before him, before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Amen. Now you understand, whenever we pray and we say amen, it means number one, a word of affirmation, affirmation that heaven affirms.